Hey, what's going on, Flash Mob? It's your boy Flash, and we're back again with another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about HoneyBook and Smart Files, why you should be using them, how to create them, and how they're going to help you in the future. This is not a video you're going to want to miss. If it's your first time here, welcome. My channel is all about helping you turn your passion into a paycheck while it's taking you along my filmmaking journey. If that's the kind of thing that you're into, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. So the first thing I guess we've got to answer is what is a smart file? So a smart file is essentially a living document that you can update and upgrade anytime you want. And what it does is it helps shares your information from your company with the client that's reaching out for your services. It's a cool system because it's interactive with your clients. So essentially you show them the information they can pick and choose what they want and cash out with the services that they're looking for. And I think one of the most important things that you can do with a smart file is introduce yourself. Because think about it. A lot of the times when a client reaches out to you, they've never heard of you before. Maybe you're coming from a referral. Maybe they saw your website, but they never actually had a chance to learn anything about you. So with a smart file, you can give them some information, warm them up a little bit before you start getting into the services and numbers. Where smart files become really interesting is when they're able to now look at your contracts and actually sign them on the spot and send you a deposit immediately. Gone are the days where you send out a contract and you're waiting for the client for days to respond to it or sign it and you're following up to do that and then now it's time for them to pay. Now you're following up with them one or two times to get them to actually pay it. Everything is all in one document and it's sent out all at once to the client. What's also really cool about your smart files is that you can update them at any time. So let's say, for example, you add a new service or maybe you change your prices. This is something you can do on the fly anytime and it's saved automatically. And to add to that, you can also duplicate your smart files. So let's say, for example, you have one package that includes, I don't know, let's say for weddings, a photo album. But then you have another package that does not include a photo album. Instead of having to take out the photo album every time you want to send it to a client, you can just send them the one that doesn't include a photo album making it just a tiny bit easier for you to send your information over. So now that we actually know what smart files are, let's take a look at how we actually make them. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to actually know is how to actually access your smart files. So the way that we do that is we go over to tools and then we go over to template and it'll bring you to this page. And then from here, you'll see all of them. You can mark them as your favorites, some saved ones. It also shows you where your emails, packages, contact forms, everything that you need is all in this one spot, which is great. Now, one thing to make sure of is on this page is that you click on where it says my templates and not legacy templates, because if you have any older files, you're not going to see the smart files if you're not on my templates. So make sure that you do that. And as you guys can see here, I have a ton of different smart files that I already created that's specific to whatever the client is reaching out to. So we'll talk about how that works and I'll show you guys how to set that up. But let's start from the beginning here. So the first thing you want to do is uh, take a look at how to make them using the template system that they already have set up. So the way to do that is you can go to the gallery by clicking here. And then as you guys can see, these are all of the different templates that either HoneyBook's team actually created or other creatives created using their template builder. So this is an awesome place to start. You can see everything that, you know, they kind of offer. And then on the side here is where it kind of gets interesting. So let's say, for example, you are, I don't know, an event planner. If you click on where it says event planner, it will show you all the existing smart files that's already been created that fits that template that works for event planners. And um, let's just take a look at another one. Obviously, I am a videographer, photographer. Uh, if we click on that, again, it'll pull up all the templates that's already in their database that follows that kind of template that's gonna be useful to you. And then when you see one that kind of catches your eye, you can actually just click on it and it'll bring up a little preview for you. And then you can start scrolling through it, have a look at how they set it up and be like, okay, cool. Let me look at the other page. Oh, this is nice. I like this as well. And then you kind of go through and you just get a feel for what they actually show and use in this actual template builder. And then if it's something that you actually like and you're like, okay, yeah, I want to use this one, you go over to where it says edit this template, then you can start throwing in your own branding, your own colors, your own packages, your own photos, everything like that is where you can start making that happen right here. 
And then if you just want to continue looking at some other ones without clicking out, there's this little arrow here that will take you to the next template builder. And you just start clicking through and you just see if it's something that you like or not. And I want to show you guys one other thing really quickly. One thing that you're going to have to do regardless um, when using this, this template builder is you have to upload your own content. So the way that you do that is you go back up to your tools, you go to library, and then this is where you upload your own assets. So like things like your logo, uh, any pages or any information that you already have created that you want to use in a smart file, you upload everything into here. And then some, one other thing that you want to take a look at is this little dimension tool. So it just shows you the different dimensions of what you should set your assets to so that they fit within the builder that you're actually using. So if you need a quick reference, you can always come back here and take a look at that. Another cool tool that they just recently introduced was their Discover Images option, which is like a, a new AI, what they call an AI image studio. And essentially what that does is it gives you a huge library of different photos that you can use completely copyright free to add into your smart files and send out to your clients. And one thing that I really love about it is that it has that whole AI technology kind of stuff in there. So you can actually use some prompts to get the type of images that you're looking for. So for example, I'm going to probably type in here, uh, someone dunking a basketball. You give it a little second here. It'll pull up some prompts. And you'll see some generated images. Now, obviously AI is not 100% there as you can see from some of these images that they put together. Like this guy's dunking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he's doing here, but that's not a dunk. That's not a dunk. This guy clearly looked like he missed the dunk. This guy's doing a layup. So it's not perfect, but it's somewhere to start. So what I like to do is if I see an image that I kind of like, I'll say, uh, click on it, I'll say, um, find similar. And then you'll start finding some images from their gallery where it's actually showing some guys dunking a basketball or going up for a dunk. Like here's a good one here. And then you can use whatever kind of fits what you're looking for. So let's go back from here to our tools and then templates. So now that we know how to do it using a template, we can also start creating our smart files from scratch. And again, I'll say if you're a beginner and it's your first time ever playing around with HoneyBook and you want to do this quick and easy, use their template system because it's amazing. If you're like me where you're kind of already familiar with, with HoneyBook and how their templates work and things like that and you want to create your own, so that's a little bit more, uh, I guess, um, similar to your own brand and your own colors and all that kind of stuff, then you can create one from scratch. So let's take a look at how you do that right now. So it's really simple. Click on create new. And then this is where you can create all the different types of smart files. Now, I like to personally use a proposal. And the reason why is because in the proposal, I can include things like the contract, the invoices, all my services, a questionnaire, all, everything, scheduler, everything I can include in the, in the proposal itself. So that's the one that I usually go with. So when you click on it, It'll load a new page for you. And I know it kind of looks a little intimidating at first. I get it. And once you start kind of understanding what's going on, you start realizing really quickly that this is a lot more simple than it looks. So right now you're looking at an invoice page and it's just a template for an invoice page. Straightforward, simple. If we actually click out of uh, that right now, You'll see the default options that HoneyBook likes to use on the right hand side here. So it'll have an invoice, a contract, and then a way for them to pay. Nothing crazy, nothing out of order, straightforward right there. If you want to start customizing it a little bit and start adding some information, you go down to here where it says add a page. And it'll open up this, uh, this little helper for you here. And um, if you have a bunch of smart files that you used previously, you can definitely go through and, you know, select one and use it over again. Uh, but for this example, we're actually going to start from a blank canvas. Just like that. And then this is where you'll see their block tool and how that kind of works. So let's look at it real quick and just see what you get here. So you can add some text, questions, obviously images or videos. You can upload files directly here as well. So if you have any images on your computer that you want to upload directly into your smart file, this is where you can do that. 
This is a little divider so that you can kind of split up different things that you're showing your clients. And then your company, your company info, um, your layouts, and then things like, again, the services, contracts, invoice, and scheduler. So all of that stuff is here for you when, uh, when you need it here. The way I like to create my smart files is I start off with an image. Um, I'll go here and I will go with, you see the different type of layouts that you can use for your images here. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use splash and then let's start editing that. And then if you want to choose a background, you just click there. And then, like I said, if you have a bunch of stuff already uploaded, this is where you're going to start utilizing it. I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to have something like that. And the title, I'm just going to say, welcome to flash forward. And then in the other text, if I want to, you obviously can type whatever you want. And if you don't, you just hit the little delete button here. But I'm going to say, let's move things forward. Cool. So now we have our header and now we can start getting into uh, what actually makes the smart file. So uh, what I like to do on my smart files, like I said before, is I like to kind of warm my clients up a bit. Most of the time, these guys coming in to talk to me are You've never met me before. They probably heard of me through a referral or they stumble across my website or social media and they just have an inquire about something that they want to have done. So instead of just hopping right into service, 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 money, 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 I send them a little bit of information about who I am, what we do, how we get you through your process, maybe show them a bit of my work, and then we get into all the numbers and money and all that kind of stuff. So what I like to do is add a block again and then I'll use add an image. And then I already have like a introduction page here. And then it says about our team. And then you'll see it just kind of load up there and then you can stretch it out so that it takes up the whole page. And then I just give something like this for my clients to look at. Really simple, really straightforward. And then for my background, I like it to be black because it would fit my um, aesthetics a little bit. So I'll go ahead and change that to black. And now we have something that looks like this, where the client will come, they'll see whatever, blah, 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 cool. So because this is my welcome page, I'm going to actually change it to what it's supposed to be here. And then you guys can see it's lined up in order of how the client is actually gonna see it. So uh, I want the welcome page to be seen first. So I'm just gonna grab these little dots here and just slide it to the top. And then one thing I'll show you really quickly here is where you see it, where it says uh, customize theme. Uh, this is where you kind of start playing around with your branding. So these are going to be the colors for your company. Uh, but you can change your fonts and all these different things and whatever. And then once you have it the way that you like it, you can apply it to your company's actual theme that if you've never done it before, you can set it up there or you could just save it here specifically for this uh, smart file. So you go down to the bottom. If you click on it and go to the next page, it'll take you to the next page. Or what I like to do is customize it a bit. Uh, a bit. So we see where it says it here. If you click on that block, it says next here. You can customize whatever you want that button to, to say. So the next thing I want them to look at is after they have an introduction, I want them to look at some of our work. So I'll say see our work. That I change to see our work. And they'll go, oh, okay, see their work. Okay, cool. So I, I want to do that. And then we actually have to create that page for them. So the way that I'll do that is I will go to add a page. And then we will start from blank. And then this is where I'm going to show you guys a bit of a trick of how I get this done. So because this is a template based editor, sometimes I don't want the layouts to look the way that they set it up. Sometimes I set it up the way that I want it to look. So the way that I do that is I incorporate uh, Canva. So let's go back here. So I'll go to create a new design and it would be a presentation, let's say 16 by nine. And this is where I'm gonna wanna show them some of the uh, stills or images from some of the projects that we've done before. So what I'll do is um, I'll go to elements and then I will search grid show all and then you, you have all these different little 
options that you could use to display your your content. Um, you just find the one that kind of works, and I'll click on this one just for now, or maybe actually this one. And then I like to also reduce the spacing down to nothing. And then what I'll do is I will go into my uploads that I already have on Canva. And then I will start uploading some content from some shoots that we did before. So um, I like some of these ones. So I will put that one in. That one. I had that one and maybe this one. And then of course in Canva, you can resize, reshape, however you want to do it. Then I have something that kind of looks like that. Now this is something that I would want to upload to the assets in HoneyBook. And the way that I'll do that, really simple. I'll just download it as a JPEG. Give that a second to download. Once it does that, add a block and add an image. And then I will click here and I'll go to upload a file. I'll locate the file on my computer, drag and drop it in there. And there you go. You have some of your work uploaded directly for the client to look at. And then if you really want to do a little bit more here, you can add another block and add a title. And then say something like, have a look at what we reset these shots. I'm just going to center that. Make it a little bit bigger. Good. And we have something that looks like that. And then again, I can repeat this step over and over if I want to add more images or not, whatever the case is, I could do that. If I want to add some behind the scenes images, again, what I could do is upload a file with some of the behind the scenes shots and then show them my crew and myself at work here. Uh, and then again, I like to make the background black. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll do it again here. Change that to black. If you close it down, now we have something that looks like that. Just gives us the ability again to have a look at some of my previous work and whatnot. I'm going to have to change the title of this one and say uh, recent work. Drag that up so that's the second thing that they see. And then what I like to do from there is uh, the next page is I will make this say, oops, let's go back. So I want this to say services. So actually they act, so after they actually saw some of the work and they're like, oh, this is actually pretty good. Oh, that's what this guy's all about. Okay, great. Now they're warmed up. So now we get into the numbers. So the next page that I'm going to want to show them is my services. So if I go there and start from blank, then we can go to services here. It says add services before invoice. Yeah, I want to add services before invoice. And then let's start from blank. And then we're going to do that. And now because I have all of my services already uploaded into HoneyBook, which is something I think that you should definitely take the time to do, especially if you're starting. Um, I have a whole entire library and playlist for you guys to learn how to do all of these simple things within HoneyBook, which I'm going to link at the top of the screen right now. So once you do that, uh, you can go in now and you can add the services that you want. So I'm going to add in my full day cinematography. Uh, let's say I want to add another one. Say so they want some editing. We can add in digital editing. Cool. Whatever that is, we got it. Two day video production. Cool. And then if you want to add your logos, you click here and you add in whatever you want. So this could be your logo, could be an image, whatever you want it to be, it could be added in there. 
And what I really like about this page is that you can make it so that the client has to select an option in order for them to go to the next page. And I'll show you guys how you do that. So if you click anywhere on the services, first of all, uh, you can allow the client to change the quantity if you want them. So if they need one, two, three, five days, whatever, they can all do it from here themselves. Uh, you could change the units here. You could add, also add the minimum and the maximum. So let's say it's a commercial that you know has a minimum of two days for them to shoot. Like you have to shoot two days no matter what. You could change that minimum from one to two. And now the client can't change that part. And then let's say on top of that, you know it's not going to take more than five days for them to do and you don't want to waste any time. You can also change that maximum to, you know, let's say six days just in case. So you could change that minimum and maximum so the client can't choose, uh, so that the client can't go crazy when they're selecting their services. And in the unit, hours, days, weeks, months, etc., you can change that to whatever it is and then the price is where you'll change it right here. You can also adjust the look of it. So again, I'm going to go with this black, uh, actually not for this one. We're going to go with no background. We can round the corners. We can add some shadows. Uh, all this kind of stuff can be displayed or not displayed. If you don't want them to see the service price, you could take that out. Unit price, etc. You could take all that stuff out. We're going to leave everything as is. But then let's go back to this required uh, field here. So once you click anywhere on the page, you'll see where you'll see these things start popping up here where the client can select one, make a multiple selection. And then this is what you want to have check marked right here is this selection is required. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I try to always make it required because if they don't have to do it, they probably won't do it. So when you do this, they select the they select the options that they want, and then this is what's going to appear on the invoice on the next couple of pages. And then again, you can add more blocks if you want. So if you want to add another image, or you want to add a video, or you want to do anything here that's going to allow you to show the client something. So let's say, for example, um, we're doing like a fashion shoot from the images that you saw before. I have a couple of videos of the final product that I would want the client to see. I can throw that in right here and I could just copy and paste the um, URL. So if I have it up on Vimeo or YouTube or whatever, just copy and paste the, the URL here and then that video will show for the client. And then bada bing, bada boom. We go over to the next option. So the client selects what they need. We go over to the invoice and their selections will show up here and everything will be on this page once they make their selection for you. And this is all happening without them interacting with you at all, by the way. So as this is happening, you're getting updates on your phone and you're seeing where they kind of are in the, in the smart file. And when you go down here, it'll show you your taxes. You could change the tax amount, whatever province or state or whatever that you live in. You can adjust that tax amount here. Um, if you want to add any discounts, you could just add your discount here from either percentage or a dollar value. Um, if you need to add another tax or like um, uh, a service charge. So for example, uh, HoneyBook, anytime a client makes a payment with a credit card, it takes a service charge fee. What I do and what I recommend you do as well is if a client is going to be paying by credit card, show them what the service fee charge is going to be on the invoice so that they know that they're paying, so that they know that they're paying a little bit more for that service fee and that HoneyBook is getting their cut out of it. The client is paying what they need to pay and you're not losing anything out of your, out of your estimate that you send them. And then probably my favorite part here is that you can uh, create a little bit of a payment plan. So I usually do two payments, uh, one at the time of the booking. So if they call me today and I send this out to them today, it's going to be due today to put down a deposit. And um, the other one is usually on the day of the production. So I don't know if it's a month from now, I'll leave it at that. But you can also customize it and do whatever you need to do. There's a bunch of little... Uh, options that you can select here, milestones, project date, etc. You do whatever you got to do. And then it'll equally split it in 50-50 if you want. Or you can do a 30-70 or a 60-40. Whatever you do for your company, you can input that information here. And it will automatically split up the total that they select. And show them what their uh, payments would need to be from here.
And then uh, you can make this a reoccurring payment. You can allow your client to pay with credit card. Uh, they can leave tips. Auto pay, all these little small things are always going to be in this toolbar on the right hand side. So now let's go to the next page, which is your agreement or contract. Um, can literally be whichever one you want. If you already have one saved because you uploaded it already, you could just delete this one. Come back here and go to where it says contract. And then it'll show you all your contract options on the side here that you just select whichever one is required for whatever you're doing. So I believe I have one for my cinematography. There we go. So that contract has been added with all the information that the client needs to see and whatever. We good to go. I'm not going to spend any more time on that. Then the final thing is pay, right? This is what the client's going to see on their end. They punch in all their information, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. They can add a tip if they want to. And then they can set up auto pay as well if they want to. And then they pay you. You're done. Then your next conversation is sending out an email, just thanking them for booking the services, letting them know that you got it every that you got everything, uh, letting them know if they have any additional questions to ask it. But once you get the payment, you're locked in, you're ready to go. And and that's the beautiful thing about the HoneyBook Smart Files is that everything is happening in the background with the client, while you just get your updates on your phone or on your or, your, or through your emails on the other end. So a few things that you want to do to help maximize your usage of smart files is to add in all of your products and services first. So once you have all of that information already in HoneyBook, you can just pull it when you need it instead of trying to create it from scratch every time. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that you have all of your contracts and agreements set up. Again, if you already have it uploaded or saved to HoneyBook, it's as easy as just pulling the contract that you need for the service or packages that you're sending out. And the last thing you want to do is make sure that you have all of your assets already uploaded to HoneyBook. So your logos, your images or whatever that you want to showcase uh, your work to your clients, any type of things that you create in Canva, things like that you want to make sure that you upload into HoneyBook so that again you could just pull them and add them to your smart files when you need them. If you guys need any additional help on how to set those things up, I will leave the link at the top again for the entire playlist that I've created where you can go back and look at how to set those up. So the last thing we're going to talk about is how does this actually help you? I like to think about it like shopping online. You go online, you see the items that you're kind of looking for. Maybe you take a look at the sizes. Maybe you take a look at some colors and you compare it amongst all the other things that you can select and you add them to cart, you cash out, and then they're being sent to you. That's exactly how it should work for you when you're promoting your services online. Clients should be able to come in, have a look at everything, pick what they want, pay for it, and then you get a notification. Once you have that initial conversation with your clients about the services that they actually want, every step after that needs to be as smooth and simple as possible for the client so that when it's time for them to pay, there's no more issues there either. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. If you guys have any other questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below and make sure that you ask them because if I don't know that you don't know the answer, I can't help you with it. So take a second. Let me know if you have any additional questions below. If this video helped you in any way, go ahead and hit that like button. It's a small tap for you, but it makes a huge difference for this channel. Every like, every view helps push this video to more people and it helps this information get around. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I want to say thank you guys for sticking around until the end of the video. As always, just remember to look, learn, and share. Take it easy, guys. Peace.